Hello friends and welcome to Orchidex Academy Virtual Classroom. Today we are going to learn about double skin partition or it is also called as stud partition. So what we are seeing here is a room which is of an overall dimension of 3.82 meters by 5 meters and we are going to provide a partition in between this room along its length to divide this room into two cabins which are of equal uh, size. So what we are seeing here, now let us try to see this in 3D so that we can get an idea about how this partition is going to look like. So looking at the room in three dimensions, this is how we are going to see the room with the partition in between. Let us try to pull down these walls so that uh, we will see it in a better way. So now we are seeing the partition more clearly. As you can see this partition is made out of a outer skin which is made out of plywood on this side as well as on the other side so we have plywood skin on both the sides and the frame is going to be inside these two skins of plywood so that is why this is also called as a double skin partition or it is also called as a stud partition now let us try to see uh, this more in detail by looking at the details of the partition so looking at the details of this partition, what we'll see is that the total length of this partition is 3.83 meters. The height of the partition is 2.1 meters up to lintel level and above that it is 0.62 meters. We'll see that there is a door here in between. This is about 800 mm and we'll also see that there is a glass which is a fixed glass which is located at 0.9 meters from the finished floor level and has a height of 1.2 meters. Now, as we mentioned earlier, <clears throat> we can see here that there, these are actually plywood skins which are there from both sides of the partition. So, if we try to hide this, let us try to see if we can hide these uh, different panels so that we'll start seeing the inside of the inside of the frame. So, if we zoom into this particular uh, part, now what we are going to see is now uh, for the timing let us try to hide the dimensions so that uh, we don't see them and let us come back to our view so now here we'll see the different members we'll see that the there are horizontal members uh, one which is there at the top at right at the slab level with this member going to get connected to the slab there are vertical members here these members will be connected to the adjoining walls and then there is a horizontal member at lintel level one horizontal member at the sill level here and here and the bottom most member which is going to get connected to the floor similarly we'll see that the vertical members are there at every point where there is an opening inside this particular uh, partition these members are also required to divide the partition into parts so that the size of the plywood which we get can properly be fitted uh, as part of the skin. Now let us try to see the joints here. So if we try to pull out this lowermost part of the partition frame and if we pull it out we will see that it is made out of a member which is of a size of uh, which has a width of 75 mm and a height of 50 mm here and it has been cut at certain locations which are corresponding to the locations of the verticals and this particular cut which has been made has been made in such a way that the width of this cut is going to be half of this width that is going to be half of 75 and this is going to be of a 50 mm cut like this so this is going to form the cross lap joint now a similar cut has been made in the vertical members so if we try to just pull this out and just try to see it we'll see that these members also have similar cuts inside them which are made to create the half lap joint. If we try to join these together, now it will become more clear how this joint is going to work like. And if we can get a transparent view or an X-ray view, we can see the inside of this joint and see how it is joined to each other. This is the cross slap joint, which we can see in action. Now let's we'll try to look at the top member here the member has got slightly different joint than the cross lap joint so let us try to just move this uh, top member out that is at the lintel level and when we pull it out what you're going to see is that this joint is slightly different 
and therefore let us try to pull it out and just go and zoom in and see how this joint is so if you'll observe here there is no cross lapping done here but there is a mortise created at points which are corresponding to the points of the uh, vertical members which are coming so just pulling it out a little bit more what you will see is this is the type of joint which is getting everywhere we will see the mortises and corresponding to these mortises you will see that the top uh, member of this frame which is the vertical member if we just pull it out and see we will see that a corresponding tenon has been made in these members so this tenon is now seen in three dimension as you can see and if we now try to join these together then we'll see how this joint gets created so looking at this joint now this is a tenon mortise joint and if we look at the x view here we'll see the inside of this joint and we'll see how the vertical member gets connected to the horizontal member by means of a tenon mortise joint now looking at the glass how this glass is connected so as we had seen earlier in the earlier lecture of the panel partition this glass is going to be fitted with the help of a beading so first what is done is that one entire um, frame here which you can see here it is made out of this uh, timber piece which is going to go all around this frame that is it is going to cover all this uh, joints here in the frame and then on top of that you're going to have these members which are going to be the beading so if we just pull out this beading you'll see that there's going to be a horizontal beading member and there is also going to be a vertical beading member here so these are the timber beadings which are going to get fitted here and the glass is going to be connected by the beading so if you look at the x-ray view now again from here you will see that this is the glass which is on the inside and we'll see the beading here uh, and here on the sides so why the beading is required for the glass obviously it is required because if you want to replace the glass at any time you can remove the beads and you can replace the glass now looking at the door what we'll see is that the door consists of a door shutter which is this and the outer subframe which has been made to create a rebet so if we suppose just simply uh, hide this door for the time being what we'll be seeing is that this is consisting of a frame this frame is made out of two timber pieces and these two timber pieces are joined to each other to create a rebet this rebet is going to have a width which is going to be equal to the width of this door and the height of this is going to be 2.1 meters from here so what we are seeing here is a joint for the frame these are going to be mitered joints as we had seen earlier in case of the panel partition now what we'll be seeing is the mitered joint so if we want to just uh, open up this joint in seat what you will see is that this is a frame and if you just go in and look at this particular joint you'll see that it is a mitered joint here and similarly the mitered joint on the other side here and these joints they are going to come and get fitted into each other so if we just simply move this here and fix it here you'll see that this is a mitered joint so this is the outer timber frame and the inner timber frame to form the rebet now looking at this door if we just move this door out and look at it from the side so let us try to move it out and just see this door uh, this door has been made uh, out of a flush door uh, out of which was cut from inside like this so a cut is made inside the flush door and the glazing has been fixed again with the help of a beading which we have seen earlier this is the 12 by 12 thick wood beading which you can see and there is a glazing in between the glazing the thickness of the glazing depends upon the size of the glazing in this particular case it could be 6 mm to 8 mm thick glazing which has been provided so the width of this particular door has been considered as 32 mm so depending upon the size of the door again we can choose a thickness which is suitable for that door now one more point which we have not mentioned here is that there is basic difference between the panel partition and the double skin partition in the sense that because there are hollows left between the two skins again let us try to see by just hiding this panels here so that we can 
get an idea about uh, what we're meaning here. So what you can see here is the sort of hollows which are left in between. Now these can be filled in with uh, insulation. So these uh, hollows can be filled in with acoustical insulation like thermocol or it could be rock wool or glass wool and thereby we can make this partition into a acoustical partition. So that is one more point or one more basic difference between these uh, the glazed the panel partition and the double skin partition. So I hope this was clear how this is constructed. Um, we'll see more about partitions in further videos. Thank you.